everyone, it's Lucy from Sweet Poppy Stencils. So today I thought I would show you um, a one of the techniques I didn't get to show you on our recent programme on Crate and Craft. Um, it's using the beautiful poinsettia bauble, which was created for us by our in-house designer, our wonderful Emma Cronin. Um, we're going to be using some inks, but we're also going to be using some texture medium. Um, and we're going to be using the translucent Sweet Poppy stencil dimensions. Now, if you've got a clear glaze, you can do this as well. So don't stress that you've got to have what I've got, but um, it is my preferred choice in my mediums. Um, it is the one I use the most, and it's got to be a clear glaze that we're going to go over the top with. So we're also going to be using some oxides. Now you could use distresses if you want, it's whatever you've got. We just want a bit of a shading of a blue. Uh, for this one, I'm gonna use tumbled glass, I've got Broken China and Uncharted Mariner. Um, I'm not going to be putting anything else on top. I could, if I wanted, I could put a little bit of sparkle. I could put glass beads over the top to give me a clear sheen. Um, you've got so many different, anything that's clear, you could pop, pop over the top if you wanted. But I want the bauble to do um, the talking. Um, I'm going to need some little one mil pearl, pearls that I've got. Um, I need my stencil tape, my magnetic sheet and my stamp press for my word, a uh, spreader and last of all, obviously my sentiment to go inside. Or you could put a sentiment across the centre if you're not very good at stamping, then type out and put a sentiment across it, whatever you want. So let's start. So we have got a piece of cardstock and our topper is going to be... 11 it's roughly 11 by 16 and then we're matting it onto a 5 by 7 card so let's go in with our tape i've got water by the side of me so you would need water um because you're going to need to wash your stencil dry it um and go in over the top with your tape so as you can see sorry my stencils are really mucky one um it's it's just well used, that's all. It's never cleaned properly at a show, so it could do with a bit of TLC. As you see, I have turned my stencil over. So you'll see your part code on the top, SP1335. You'll see all our brand and the designer's names on stencils. I've just flipped it over because I want mine this way. So I need a magnetic sheet wherever I put that. So I've got my magnetic sheet. And I've got my stencil. So I'm just making sure it's about central if I wanted it to be central. Now you could just ink and stamp on top of it. You don't have to use mediums if you don't want to. It is such a beautiful stencil. And you can do this technique with any of our stencils. It's just I thought I'd show you how to get a bit more dimension to it. So I'm masking all the way around with our low tack stencil tape. So I'm popping out the way, so make sure it's nicely stuck down so I can maneuver it. And I've got my tapes, uh, my inks. So I'm going in with my blue oxide brush, not my normal blue. So let's just check what I've got on there. And we're gonna go in with light. So we're starting off, tapping off, and I'm going over and I'm just working my way down again I just want a real beautiful blend I'm not going to stress what I've got I want slightly lighter in the middle so more or less you trying to go with a bit of an ombre effect I suppose trying to get darker around the edges building up to the top so again we're going over and I really like this because you never get to the same, I suppose, because, um, you know, inks of a law unto themselves. Um, it depends where you're putting the inks, I suppose. So we're going again, slightly darker. And we're... <coughs> Now 
Normally I go dark light and blend in the middle, but this time I'm, I'm just trying to wing it. There we go. And let's go dark. So this is our Uncharted Mariner. Whatever you've got, play with. This is a beautiful colour. So again, taking it up the sides, up the sides, just to give me a bit more depth. So I'm going to clean that off a little bit, get rid of some of my inks and go in with my light again. So tapping off. Making sure I'm getting all in the edges of where my stencil is so that I know I am going to get a beautiful bauble shape on this occasion. Sometimes it's nice just to do a real soft haze of the stencils um, just to give if you're going to stamp over the top of it. I think that might be it. Let's go a little bit darker again here. So as you can see, I'm tapping off before I go to it, tapping off all the time. Okay, tapping off that dark colour just in case. Yeah, let's see what we've got it's a bit of card at the end of the day so this is the important thing you need to wash this stencil because we're going over with our mediums so there we go isn't that beautiful such a beautiful design so we're going lid on because we now have finished with those and pop those away out the way clean up because I'm forever getting fingerprints on everything. There we go. So you would wash your stencil, dry your stencil. Okay, I'm lucky I've got two, so only for quickness. So what you must do now is, without me trying to knock everything, is dry, let me get that from underneath. Dry, but without, uh, warping your card okay just give it a quick blast because you need your ink dry but what I don't want is I don't want my card all cockled there we go that'll do Let's pop that to one side there we go so imagine you've washed you've dried you've now got your stencil you now have a right and wrong way obviously for your stencil so your stencil is going to go back on that way so again, go back in, magnetic sheet. So we're going to paste the stencil now. So most important is with this stencil is, and with all our stencils, look at where your weak points for your paste is. If we paste this way, it's going to creep under your stencil along here. So what you need to do is you need to turn your stencil around. It doesn't matter if you paste that way, that way. You've just got to turn around what's best for the stencil. All right, so we're just going to line up our stencil. Lovely, just get it into line. Fabulous. Lovely. And I think that looks pretty straight. So I'm then going to, excuse me whilst I just make sure that I have got it everywhere where I need it to be. And then you're just going to tweak it in to shape. That's it. There we go. So we're coming this way with this stencil. Oh, what I haven't done, stamp the middle. Got to stamp your middle. Come on, Lou. So let's quickly stamp a verse in. See, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Now, I couldn't stamp on top once I have my medium on, um, because it would be a um, glossy surface. I suppose I could stamp on with stays on, um, but 
to be quite honest it's easiest to do it all pre medium so we're going up make sure we tap down we're going in with a versamark now i will have to give it a quick blast because uh your versifying clear um stays wet longer so make sure we're nicely stuck down lovely beautiful so again from the merry and bright set i do love this stamp, uh the stamp set and i'm just gonna quickly that's it see i'd have been kicking myself if i hadn't um remembered that at the last minute so as we said we're going back in so again all that faffing before now we're gonna just go for it lovely happy happy just taking a couple of seconds just to line up i place it down just make sure it's not shifted or moved so i can see there so we're working on our magnetic sheet again always a magnetic sheet never not a magnetic sheet i think i'm quite happy with that so we're coming this way with it and we are going in with our tape so what we're going to do is we're going to spread our translucent medium so nice big long long and again one two and again one and two i think i'm still in shock i do forget sometimes and witter on away and then realize i'm out of shock which is so frustrating so again and one two so we're lovely masked off we've got spreader get my that out the way and pull my sleeves up so i don't get my elbows in it and in with my medium so i need a palette knife so your mediums will look like they've set don't make the mistake of stirring them you stir them you make them sloppy so use them as they are i never stir mine up until sort of the last sort of dregs then i'll give it a good old stir um and i tend to put lots of pots together of uh, the same one that i have around uh around me because i'm terrible i'll have two or three pots going at once so we've got our body so you can see you've got big expanse and the reason that we start up here we're not going to over swipe it once on once off so we're on up you can see missed a bit so you just pop it in the middle back in so once twice and then this is the last one because you'll end up taking more off what happens is your card in the middle will start rising and as you keep swiping you're going to keep taking off and taking off and taking off so in the end you end up um throwing it away so put once on once off leave it don't mess with it if you find that you've got any little nicks or anything let it dry once it's dry give it a second coat or a third coat rather so we're gonna take it off i try not to keep swiping and swiping so when it's a big expanse remember maximum is about two swipes once on once off so we're taking off we're always leaving one of our hinges and then what we're going to do is we get under there lift off straight off that goes straight into water to be cleaned with um, a nail brush because they are very sharp and you will cut yourself if you use your fingers as i've known to my expense now drying time depends on the warmth of your room okay um I tend to put this in the window over a very warm radiator it will dry a lot quicker try not to put heat near it because what will happen is it will bubble so just let it naturally dry so once that's bone dry so let me pop that to one side because that's really pretty and i know that will dry beautiful get that out the way and we're going to go in with obviously matting and layering so a little bit of matting all you need to do Go down a piece of card with one of your chosen inks around the edges and there you have your colouring of your mat. 
which you can then mat and layer. So we have the five by seven. So I've got a little bit of tape this time, but what I am gonna do is because I know I will get it crooked, I'm gonna go over my tape with a little bit of wet glue, which will help give me time to get it straight. So it just, if you're not very good, and I'm not, I get it crooked, then I try and rip it off, then I ruin the topper and frustrate, absolutely frustrate myself sometimes. So with this, this will allow me to lift and position it a couple of times. There we go. See, if I hadn't then, I'd have been pulling that, separating it. So I've already, so this is dried, okay? And this is where I'm saying, this is lighter than this one. I'll never get to the same unless you do the same one colour straight ink over. So we're going in with some gem, uh, some pearls. I've already popped a couple of pearls, not loads of pearls up here. Um, it's just me. I prefer it not to be pizza topped. And then what I'm going to do is I just want to enhance just these little centres, just in the middle. So, and this I find is the hardest bit is getting these pearls up on your, your pokey tool. They've got a law, they're a law to themselves. There we go. So one in the middle there, and then we just need one little one up there. And I think that might even be it then. There we go. So yeah, I'm happy with that. One, two, three, four, five, six, so that's, even numbers, got to be odd numbers. Um, I think we can go there. There we go. There we go. So again, beautiful card. You could batch do all your inking first. And then what you could do is once your inking's done, you could then dry and start going through your tops bit by bit. There you go. I hope you enjoyed that technique. Don't forget to tune in to Sweet Poppy Stencils.